<laughs> Hello, everyone. What is going on? My name is Topedia, and welcome back to the TNT Podcast, episode 114. Damn we're back. Man. It's been... A, yeah, I looked it up way beforehand. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're back. We're ready to ready to mingle. <laughs> um, yes. Not single, though. Uh, <laughs> um, but as always, like I said, my name is Timpedia, and on my right... Uh, Friedman, also known as Andrew, but mostly known as Friedman. And on my left... Tyler, also known as just Tyler or Tyler. <laughs> and Not going cross. with your uh, official title. Yeah. The, the big TV anime expert. <laughs> and a cross. Uh, I am. A, I'm. I'm Locke. What's up? Not it's Halo Locke. Lock. Different Locke. Different. Different Locke. Final, Locke, hello? Final Fantasy VI Locke. Oh, okay, I oh, thought shit. you were the. Oh, <laughs> God damn. I was like, what do we got? I was like, here? I've never played Halo Five, so I don't know who you're talking we'll, about. Uh, I don't care. We'll get to that later. <laughs> that, that is that is a a little that's a little teaser, a little teaser <laughs> yeah. for the future. Pretty much. Speaking of teaser for the future. <laughs> oh Lord. So today. Uh, I think it was today, right? So we had leaks today yeah. about Xbox Series S, the low-power version of the new Xbox coming out this fall. Um, and in response to those leaks a few hours later, after tweeting a meme about it apparently, Microsoft tweeted out a trailer for the Series S explaining all its specs and most importantly the first price we have gotten for the new consoles this fall. Two ninety nine. Ooh, I mean, that's an extreme. Yeah. That's probably the most competitive price they could have announced for any of the consoles, be it the high end or low end at all. Yeah, it is super budget for for a console with confirmed and NVMe in it. That's wildly cheap. Uh, I think it was also confirmed that it's going to run at. It's going to have specs that can handle 120 FPS and 1440p. Yeah, that's not the full 4K crazy. of the Series X that still hasn't I, been shown. I don't but know that's... what kind of black magic they <laughs> traded their souls in for, but if that if they if that is true and they can do 2K at 120 FPS, Whew. For three hundred bucks. Oh, wait, I PS thought it was just ten eighty p. They were talking about this I morning. I thought they said fourteen forty, but maybe it is ten eighty. Uh, I did see. I watched that the uh, the teaser, and I did see fourteen forty. Oh, okay, cool. But up to one twenty frames per second. The weather. The, it's obviously it's that doesn't mean guarantee. Yeah. It's the up to that you have to worry about because if they can only do one twenty and like, you know, if, if you're not doing one twenty and then like what. It doesn't. Matter. I will say, apparently, I saw some comments uh, from like either a dev or something who said this is actually not like a different console you're developing for. This is just a different SKU. So it's not being. It's not. It's not a case of like, oh, this is like you're developing for the Series S and X. This mm -hmm. just handles it all, which is also impressive and good, because <laughs> it's hard enough developing for different consoles. I'm sure, much less different SKUs of the same console. <laughs> Oh, I didn't expect it to be otherwise. That'd be like someone saying the PlayStation Slim or PlayStation Four Slim is a different console. I've never no, I, I don't disagree. I, 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 obviously that's what you expect, but it's still nice to hear because we've had generations like with the PS3 and everything where it was such a clusterfuck of development. <laughs> but yeah, this yeah. is uh, this is. Wait, were there things only available for the PS3 Slim? Mm, uh, I don't think so. I'm just saying, like, all the horror stories of how hard it was to develop on the PS3 in general. Oh, I understand. That's just because the PS3 didn't have, a like, a standard PC architecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what is the cell architecture yeah, for, <laughs> for a thousand? Thank you. Um, Thanks, Alex. There's not much other info about this other than the price and the specs. Obviously, you don't need much else. I don't think there's a release date yet, which makes sense because it'll probably be the same day as the Series X. All I know is that I ain't getting it because I got a PC. So... I'm Edge. wondering, I'm wondering how they're going to do this because I I feel like this is both the greatest and worst marketing decision they could have made in terms of selling this. This is going to be the hot selling console. Everyone gets this to buy FIFA, and by extension, all their friends get it to play FIFA with them. But the the problem I have with it is I saw the news this morning, 
and I closed the article because I'm like, okay, cool. They they're rebranding the Xbox One S for two ninety nine. Is this even cheaper? And I sat I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's not the Xbox One S. It's the Xbox Series S. I'm like, is that supposed to be the next gen one? I'm not sure. I thought it was Series X. And then I'm sitting here I'm like, oh, so they're just trying to position themselves that it's not the Xbox version Series X, but this this hardware model is the Xbox Series. And this is the S model of the yeah. Xbox series. That's the title. But if you look at their typography, series is not a promoted word. Xbox is the platform. Series S is the model. So for all games, it's series X slash series look, S. We've, we've established that not, Microsoft is horrible at this. They don't have a parent category to say this game is for Xbox, unless that's what they're going to brand it as. They're all bad at this, okay? And my concern so is people are going to see series S and not know, is this a 1S or is this a series X? And totally. what the fuck is this? You're super right. So I mean, part of me something, that, something, something. Grandma's gonna buy you a Nintendo for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I feel like the, the informed customer they're gonna jump on this. This is the cheap and quick option to get you know next gen gaming on Game Pass, whatever. But mom and dad are gonna be like, "Here, a series. We, you wanted the Series S. Here it is, and you get them an Xbox One S. Like same thing. It's an Xbox S." Hey, like, see, yeah, here's the thing. It's bad. So, the naming conventions and, really and the, need the to be. The only out reason now. I think this has any traction is people didn't know Wii U was a separate console. Like, it was a legitimate concern and why the sales were so low is the average consumer didn't think the Wii U was a separate console. Well, maybe if they didn't fucking have Nimrod naming conventions, maybe. Just I'm maybe. Like, a Google search could solve most things, but most people don't Google search. They just see it and right. know it. So. I'm They're concerned all that this is be a problem because, by all means, this should be like the big win for Xbox. Here is getting the cheap version out, super cheap, and fully functional. Anyway, that's the point I wanted to make. Oh, fuck yeah! No, no, no. Who, who cares? We all got computers in here. We don't need no yeah. stinking Xbox Series S. True. Not Xbox One S. I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm not buying one. I ain't buying one. Does it? So here's a question: Does it come with a disk drive at all, or no? No. Okay. No. Oh, the series S is cross yeah. On it. Okay, that's fine. I'm trying to think because I could. So here's the thing: at this price point, I could almost see buying this as like the Blu-ray pl or the streaming box kind of thing <laughs> that can play games sometimes. Like I have game as someone who has Game Pass. I could see a world where I would be like, eh, maybe I'll just buy one, like, and just have it in, on a TV, like, at, you guys know at the house we're going to, like, there's going to be a sitting area in the upstairs outside of the main bedroom, like, maybe I just buy an Xbox that sits there, and if you want to do streaming or play a game out there sometimes. I mean, if you see yourself gaming, yeah, but, like, a Roku's $20, so, like, if you're not right. actually going to game on it, it's not worth spending 300 for a set-top box. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like, but yeah. considering I was talking about buying a phone at three fifty that I don't care if it breaks in a year or two, versus spending a thousand dollars again, I could see buying something like this. Or you know, getting a what's it called? Uh, I mean, you probably can't find them around, but one of those Steam boxes, whatever the fuck they're called. Steam Link. I have one. Steam no, Link. No, yeah, no, I got one of those. No, what? no, no, What's no, wrong no. with it? Steam I like Links mine. Are awful. I like mine. They have horrible. They. They do not work as advertised. What do you mean? Uh, what, all, right, what, all right, no. Here's the thing. I don't use it um, on Wi-Fi. I got to put that shit hardwired. Then oh, that yeah. shit works. That's that's kind of the problem, though, isn't it? Nah, I'll run wired. I don't, yeah, like, I don't mind running wired. Your computer wired. to the living room. Oh my god. Speaking you know, anyway, anyway, like right. that's. Anyway. Whatever. Last point about the S, and this is going to end up also being an issue for the PlayStation 5 Slim, is these hard drive sizes are not going to work like five years from now. So, uh, they're not going to work this year. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, we're pretty close to, like, Call of Duty not fitting on the series. The, like, Call of Duty, didn't the didn't the uh, Cold War, uh, uh, like, file size leak at, like, 200 gigs? Oh, my God. Jeez. That's so much. Like, it, um, it, like, Cold War is already fucking larger than Modern Warfare, and Modern Warfare is it's like almost large. 200 gigs on disc. So like large. you, this is an unacceptable file size, especially for a console 
that is discless. Hopefully like. this sets this sets them as like, yo, we know our target demographic is on consoles. And we know that like maybe 30% of the entire console market doesn't have a hard drive over 512 gigabytes. Maybe, just maybe, yeah. we should work on not making our games obnoxiously so, large. So here's two quick comments on that. One, this has been a problem since the 360 era. I mean, the arcade 360 had a four, had like what? It was like a, a four, four gigabyte, gigabyte hard drive. Tiny, yeah. Oh God, that's terrible. But that was like the beginning of the era of downloadable games. Well, l- I mean, the other thing though is while this is an NVMe drive, Microsoft hasn't talked at all about uh, whether or not you can plug in external drives or anything like that. Obviously, that's there's a good chance that wouldn't happen. I mean, the, but... the problem is no, no plug you plug in will be as fast as an NVMe connection. Totally, but it could still be kind of fast. <laughs> I look, I don't disagree that it's a big I mean, problem. If I'm it's just like saying... three point one USB, like that's that's fine. It's fast I'm, enough. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying. Like Microsoft, someone at Microsoft knows that that's an issue. <laughs> And there must be some reason behind the decision, whether or not it's a good decision. But I feel like someone knows that that's a thing, and maybe we haven't heard all there is to know. And I'm pretty yeah. sure the average game doesn't get this bloat, and then they know that. Whatever, also, yes, Call of Duty is fatter than everybody else. Yeah, like barring oh, Call of Duty, they fat. know their target demographic will probably only have a couple games totaling up five calls at a given time. But, like, we are getting there with a lot of AAA games, though. Like, Hitman yeah. 2 was 150 gigs. Holy shit. Or, yeah. Well, those are I pretty mean, big maps. That's a lot of AI Hitman maps. 2, yeah, Hitman 2 also had all of the Hitman 1 maps in it. Oh, Jesus. So, like, I that I kind of get. Like, they, they did the big. whole Left 4 Dead thing. But, I, I mean, like, I feel like Fatty. we're just at the inevitable precipice of the... Just, I uh, we every game is gonna want to eat yeah. all of your storage. Let's see and what like, happens in the Series ugh. X. Let's see how big that hard drive is. Wasn't it? Isn't it just a terabyte for the Series X, Do or did they not God, announce? I, I don't even know. They have to do something to justify a price increase of. Okay, so last thing about this: how much more? Now that we know this price. How much do you guys do you guys have any ballpark guess on the Series X? Hundred dollars more. I'm gonna say four fifty uh, probably. It's, it's I was gonna say four fifty. Probably gonna be four fifty. I think Which, they can justify making the X a little pricier because they have a budget model for everyone else who's really concerned. Well, I think like we know they're bumping up the graphics hard dri- hardware and the hard drive size. Obviously, um, I think going to five hundred is silly. And I think if Sony comes in at five hundred, even that fifty bucks is a big deal. Well, didn't we? Isn't that confirmed that the didn't they leak at at those prices? Wasn't there like an Amazon leak where uh, they had the PS Five listed for five hundred dollars? I don't remember seeing that. Uh, I don't. I'm not saying you're wrong. I don't remember. I feel PS5. like I would remember a PS Five price leak. I know there was a leak from Pringles supposedly the other day that was the Xbox price leak, but <laughs> I don't remember a PS5 thing. Uh, okay. Apparently, Sony refuted that price leak. Okay. Um, hold on. What year did the PS3 come out? It was like 2006. Oh God. Two thousand oh, six. Um. Oh, I'm doing some quick maths here. On inflation, so, quick math. Inflation, quick the PS3's 599 US dollar launch price in 2006 would be equivalent of 770 dollars today. Oh God! There is literally Jesus. no way Sony touches 600 even. No way. That would no, if they, they want to kill they the PS5. They can't, they can't break 500 or they lose. Especially with okay, hard drive <laughs> spot, oh, sorry, size they, they and everything. Like the, they if still this... also have the budget no disc version like Xbox has, but I don't think the, I don't know what the difference is going to be. I think if Microsoft they also undercuts both, that's a big deal though. Saying that there's backwards compatibility. So... They had to backpedal that statement. Yeah, they did. They backpedaled it. Oh, a little did they? Bit. When there's, did they? Because it requires so... a certain degree of developer support. So they need developers to sign on to make existing games also so, work. Uh, so here's the thing: they originally said like everything, and then they rolled it back to like almost everything. <laughs> well, because they're 
my understanding is that the PS5 backwards compatibility is going to work like the Xbox One backwards compatibility. Well, I was going it, to say it's not like they're they're not throwing uh, all of the other PlayStation mod models into a PS5. No, so that it could natively support it. Like it's all a software. Well, I thought it was going to run a three and two hardware on it, and that was just ridiculous to assume. <laughs> yeah. Also, no one's ever going to run Cell again. Also, absolutely spoiler alert, not. Ha- like the reason backwards compatibility is still a discussion is because Microsoft has been doing it all generation. Uh, yeah. Like they've been doing uh, a lot with backwards and, compatibility lately for the last few years, just kind of quietly. Uh, bless them. I mean, the thing that, the, I mean, the time that matters most is during a console gen change. Like after that, yeah. it matters a lot less. I mean, and that's why Microsoft is like, Hey, everything's going to run on the one. And that's why there was that big rumor that Infinite for one was getting canned, and then Microsoft was like, hell no, we're not canning that. Speaking of companies, gaming companies, that never have had bad messaging in their entire life, Nintendo had a bunch of announcements in the past few weeks. Oh man, the Kings. Go ahead, the Freeman. I've returned with more announcements. So I've been crying for years. <laughs> That I wanted to play Super Mario Sunshine again. You have actually, was, we have podcast episodes where you've brought this like, up. Like, for sure. years, I've been begging for this. Back in 2000, it was right before the Wii U came out, there was a leaked trailer at E3 of Mario Sunshine running on the Wii as part of some, like, 3D re release collection. And Nintendo's like, no, it's not <laughs> happening. Stop talking no. about it. And then just, there's been nothing. Dead Silence never released. I think they were just offended that it got leaked. Which is going to lead into my theory I'm getting. We're going to leak anyway, this, but we'll cancel it. <laughs> the point is to celebrate Mario's 35th anniversary. Uh, they're releasing the Super Mario 3D Collection, which is supposed to harken back to like the Super Mario Collection that came out for Super Nintendo that, that had all the previously released games together. Um, and for this, they're throwing three of the like flagship 3D Mario games. They got Sun, uh, Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and then Mario Galaxy One together. And then they confirmed that. Um, Crap, whatever Mario game came out for Wii U is getting re-released on Switch. Uh, And for some reason, Mario Galaxy 2 is nowhere to be found. Um, But part of Nintendo's big thing is that for the 35th anniversary, to make this re-release special, it's going to be limited time. And everyone's like, okay, that's fine. Collector's physical editions, we get it. It doesn't matter. The eShop exists. And Nintendo's like, nah. The eShop is also limited time availability (laughs) because this is a collector's (laughs) item. Shit's stupid. So I'm here's not, the thing. I'm not going to defend this. I have an explanation, but I'm not defending this. Oh, I don't either. But like, I so I can understand some baseline thinking because there are plenty of games. Like I play League all the time these days. There are skins that are not available and will theoretically never be available again. That's a thing that happens in games. But that's not an entire generational release of three games one of which is like over 20 years old (laughs) yeah no i i get it artificial scarcity is a real thing and there's a reason everyone does it but the availability of your game is this is some next level shit (laughs) for three games even yeah so anyway so the next controversy on it was the pricing so they're pricing it the same way they would virtual console where all these would be considered $20 games. Oh and my since it's God. a bundle where you can't buy them piecemeal, it's a $60 collection, which <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I paid for it. Each of those games is worth $20. In my opinion, Should some people may not agree. People, people with emulators think they're not worth a penny, but and a lot of, no, a lot of what people you are mean? crying about like, look at how like the, the crash collections only 40, the spiral collections only 40. And I like, yeah, I, I get it. They're a lot cheaper, but at the same time, like this is Nintendo. Nintendo yes. has literally never dropped a price on a game they've sold. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, no, this is bullshit. Like, Regular actually. Nintendo DS games that they hey, still have on hand still cost twenty nine ninety nine, the same price as the day they hey, want. Hey, guess what, Freeman? They don't have to drop the price, so they won't, because they'll. You, they know you fucking pay for yeah, it. Yeah, they know I'm gonna pay for Sunshine. I've been asking them to let me pay for Sunshine for fifteen Us years. Fucking sheep are just gonna buy it anyway. You know what? This how many? Is bullshit. How, how much? Time, how many times the other consoles have the Switch been sold th- during quarantine? No one else sold out during quarantine. It was the fucking Switch. For real. How but many copies of Animal Crossing that are never going to go down in price were sold? How many millions? Dude, this is, this, this is why Nintendo's still in business. But here's <laughs> my theory about Nintendo. And I'm hearing more and more of this shit as I hear some like leaked developer stories regarding Mario Galaxy 2 and what the whole deal with Miyamoto being a director is there and why no one's happy. But point is... Um, Nintendo doesn't treat the Mario series like 
it's a game. They treat it like it's a piece of art. They don't want to devalue it by selling it for less than 20 because in their eyes, there's no way this thing could be worth le less than 20. So they won't sell it for less than that because that's the value they put on their work, which I'm not saying is good. I'm saying this is like how Nintendo operates. Anytime you ask why Pokemon X and Y still cost $40, that's why, because they don't believe that their art should cost any less than that. Freeman, here's a question. Yes. You know how we've talked about recently, like Sega turning around a lot on things like PC, like the Persona, what was it, Persona 3 oh, on PC? Yes. It was Persona um, 4. But, um, Persona 4, like Yakuza coming to PC. Oh, it's the that. same kind of thing. Um, so Atlas and a lot of Japanese developers like just don't value other income sources. Well, like, if you make a ton of money abroad, it's not seen as a successful game. Well, but well, what I was going to say is clearly that's a change that started to happen from the top. Like Sega themselves were like, wow, Sega. people people went kind of apeshit when we re-released Persona 3 on PC. Maybe we'll do this more in the future. Do you so ever do you, think that would happen at Nintendo ever? Will so there yes, ever the, be a change? The, reason, the reason it happened at Sega was because the CEO stepped down and let his son take over the company. And his son was like, yo, there's a lot of people who want to buy these <laughs> games. Why aren't we selling them? And his dad would be like, oh, they're Gaijin. Don't worry about it. Whereas the son's like, they have money. I am worried about it. So Sounds it would like take... these guys didn't have money. <laughs> money so I am worried is about. Nintendo leadership has to change hands. And for the longest time, it hasn't. Miyamoto is still in charge. Of... He has this depth grip on the Mario series. So I don't, I don't hate Miyamoto, but a lot of stuff has come out about just how he's very old school and Nintendo stays the way it's always been because of that. So you would need a change of leadership at the top, as you suggested. Okay. And I don't know when the hell that's happening with Nintendo. I'm not a fan of any of this. <laughs> of what? This is why Everybody motherfuckers like this. pirate. Yes. This is why motherfuckers put on the hat. And, and they Come don't want to. Away. And honestly, I don't know. I'm, I'm like borderline getting tired of Nintendo shit, honestly. Like, this is... This is a personal thing, and I've been talking about it for a while. But like, it, like in recent events, like especially like with the Switch, like to me they've done just a lot of things wrong, and I just don't like it. Like I'm not a fan of their business practices at all. They're doing this fucking Disney shit, like oh six Disney months, vault, yeah, and it's going back into the fucking Disney vault. Like oh, okay, like you got all these people. We'll sell like it again not, in five years for the next anniversary. Yeah, and like, I don't know, I just think it's kind of fucked up. It's like, you got all these people who, like, want to still enjoy your games, but the problem is, a lot of your fucking shit's dying. Like, all the batteries on all the fucking cartridges are going out, and they will be at some point. Like, the tech is getting and, old. And the we, memories are just decaying on the cartridges, too. Yeah, so it's like, you know... And and for everybody else who, like, through the years, it's like, you know, like, every other generation, like, I'll upgrade my, the games that I like. Like, I bought the story, or the Kingdom Hearts the story so far, because that's a franchise I like. Oh, I thought you were going to say because um, you're a loser. Because I am a loser. <laughs> well, it's yes, another reason, it's another way of true. me saying loser. But it's like, you know, like, Freeman's like, oh, I want to play Sunshine again, but, like, you know... All right, so, like, for my thing, right, like, when I was younger, right, my dad was like, all right, like, we'll get the next thing, but, like, you got to ditch your old shit. And it's like, that was the option that I had, and it's like, it was fair, right? Like, he's like, I'm not going to spend money on stuff that, like, you may or may not play anymore, so, Hell yeah. like, fucking toss it. It's like, all right, fine. And that's what I had to do. And now I have money. And it's like, oh, I can go back and, like, maybe play these games or, like, relive them if I wanted to. But it's like, with Nintendo games, I'm very limited because of how much they, of, of you know, because they're literally gatekeeping their shit. Dude, we, uh, we talked about, uh, geez, it was like a year ago now. Remember when I had, uh, I wanted to take out my DS and play um, uh, Heart Gold or Soul, Soul Silver? And it's like, yeah, oh, those are yeah. just not available because Nintendo stopped selling them. They're too lazy to put them on the eShop. And it's like, I had to borrow a cartridge from a friend who thankfully had one. Or yeah, I would man. have to pay exorbitant prices. And it's like, man, way to do this the worst way possible. You'd make so much money if you just put that on an eShop. They do, all well, they got to do is put them... And the problem with, even with that, though, is that that stuff is 
eventually just not going to work anymore. Yeah, when the yeah. Like, when the Wii eShop went away, yes. everything you downloaded just stopped working. Yep. And the worst part is like they have they have the, they have made this console that is versatile. Like it is not only just a you know home console, it is also like their mobile console now forever. Or at least, you know, for the foreseeable future. You're telling me that they're gonna forego all of this. Even the money mm-hmm. to just say fuck it and like just not and not even bother with it. They like, just don't know how to do it a different way. It's just they've so, always done it this way and it's always worked. It fucking it just boggles me. Unfortunately, and it's just annoying too because they don't even and that's the thing they don't even make anything that like out there as far as IPs worth to make me go like oh hey like this game looks fucking stellar and like out of the ordinary and new that I'm gonna try it. Like they don't take risks like that, like these other fucking companies do. And Tyler, it's honestly not, starting to piss me off. You're not wrong, but I feel like, at least for me, I'm just not enough of a Nintendo. I don't want to say fanboy, but lifelong fan of Nintendo. I've never played more than like one or two Mario games seriously. Well, there's and, at least one Mario game I recommend playing seriously. Well, I no, I know, I yes, I know, but I mean like <laughs> Odyssey. When Odyssey came out, everyone like you've seen Donkey's video, I'm sure about it. And yeah, like, I loved Odyssey. I thought Odyssey was great. Well, then there you go. That's where the that's the new like, exciting. Like thing for I that wanted IP. new shit though, but that's see, it's not, not new enough. It's not new, and it's basically just not your wrong, your average shit. Like like I want shit like you know Luigi's Mansion. I want shit like Super Mario. Did you say Luigi the new Luigi's Mansion wasn't that good? Yeah, I wasn't a fan of it. But <laughs> like, he wants more because it gives him a chance to do it better next time. Fair. Yeah, it get like it's it's something different. Like you know, I at least like that they made a new one anyway, because like like you know, Freeman just said like it gives them an opportunity to like maybe do it a little bit better, right? And it's like I thought Sunshine was cool. Like it was a super interesting take on Mario, and it's like oh well, we're we're just gonna give him like you know, Mario, like, pal shit, like, for the rest of his games. And it's like, they're nothing like Flood. Absolutely nothing like Flood at all. Because, like, the hat is literally just a fucking hat. Like, yeah, sure, taking, like, control of enemies is, like, a cool gimmick, but it's something that's been, like, you know, done a thousand times before. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to hijack nothing your point. Interesting. To I go hype, for up, it. hype up why I love Sunshine so much is... Um, at the very start of the game, and at various points, they take Flood away from you. And at that point, you have to play the game as just a normal Mario game, because with Flood removed, the jump physics are identical to the way they were in 64. So it's when they take things away from you, you realize how different the game is with them. And my question is whether if you did that with the mechanic in Odyssey, would it be the same? No. Because like, like with Galaxy, the whole... like When you remove the pointer and all the shooty bits, or the fuck they were called, star bits, oh, yeah. like, you remove it, like it's still just a Mario game without that mechanic. And I'm curious, like, how much you can disconnect the hat from Mario and Odyssey, because I haven't played most of it. Honestly, you can't. I honestly think you can, because, like, the only things that the hat does is, like, okay, like, you can, you know, take control of enemies, like, go to certain places. But as far as, like, the mechanics of the game go, you don't need the hat for literally any of it. Like, in terms of platforming or, like, the main core gameplay. Whereas opposed to... um super mario or sunshine like the flood was pretty much your main mode for not only just getting around but combat as well oh and like the the different nozzles which one you picked for a mission changed everything exactly so that's why i'm still hyped to play sunshine in two weeks no i like i would be fine to play sunshine it's just like i don't know i'm tired of the same shit i'm not tired of nintendo's like how much i paid for this but still yeah, I'm I'm tired of like the same business practices over and over again. So what I'm actually hoping is happening here, and by hoping I mean fuck Nintendo if any of these things come to occur. But what I'm willing to bet is Nintendo could not figure out teleworking for the life of them. So everything's been pushed back, including the planned Super Mario collection for the anniversary. So this is them putting out a collection for the anniversary, knowing full well they're trying to do the full Mario collection that they're going to do at a later time, which is why they're making this limited availability for the anniversary. I'm hoping, but that also means you fuck everyone who bought it limited edition because they thought there was no other way to buy it. Yep. In which case, that is Nintendo either way. Thinking, Freeman. Nintendo. 
the 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 thing is like i also i also want to believe that the problem is this is like quintessential nintendo i know like there's like, nothing this that is you to believe that nintendo shit. nintendo knows they're making a mistake and is going to fix it and like no nintendo thinks they like we did it we sold these three games again and they fell for it we saved the world oh my God. we're only gonna sell it for three months it's gonna sell twice as much as it would if we let it go unlimited like it's just it's so ridiculous like ugh. all right such a all good right. life to and they just right. and moving on yeah. Yeah. Stuff. so this no, morning i'm sorry no it's okay it's okay no it's fine no, it's a good time so moving on this morning uh nintendo confirms a hyrule warrior sequel is in the works and this one is set 100 years before uh, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Man, Persona fans the were not happy given that Hyrule Warriors is the same genre and gameplay as Persona 5 Scramble, a game that's been out in Japan for like a year now. Nintendo was super hyped to have a Persona game on their console again, and then just no word about a US release. <laughs> but we got Hyrule Warriors 2, so get fucking hyped for that shit. Yo, um, stay mad, losers. I mean, I'm real. actually... Stay salty, because um, I I'm am. Bizarrely hyped for, I'm bizarrely hyped for this, and I'm gonna buy it. See, I never I never played the original High World Warriors, because I'm just not into, like... Dynasty Warriors game. combat. Yeah, it, it, it's it's just Dynasty Warriors. If you don't like Dynasty Warriors, or you don't know what Dynasty Warriors is, you're not gonna care about this. The only one I ever wanted to play that was the Gundam one, and that's just because I recognized oh, a couple of Gundam good. characters. I think they're fun, but like they're never fun enough that I want to play more than one level at a time. Correct. You're like, that's I, the problem. Like, that's I want to play a level and then put it down. <laughs> That's the kind of game that if we still had the demo discs that came with like Xbox Magazine and shit, it's like you would burn that demo disc apart playing yeah, that demo. Exactly. But That's I never need. need to buy that game as long as I live. For real. Um, and the Fair. last one, let's just talk about an unfortunate hashtag. So for anyone who had the misfortune oh of trying out the mobile game Pokemon Masters, um, it was a really like in your face, like give us your fucking money, this is a gotcha game kind of game. Like <laughs> gameplay was. Like, the game was awful. You had one tutorial fight, and then immediately they ask you to spend ten dollars on a gotcha roll. <laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah. uh, no, all right. Uh, so I didn't play it. They tried to revamp it, and keeping with the way the the trading card game went, where they added the EX cards, they're like, let's just slap EX on the end of this title and hashtag it, so everyone else can go play Pokemon Masters EX. But the problem is, you end up with the hashtag Pokemon Master Sex, and it's. <laughs> It was a fun. <laughs> it was a fun Wednesday dealing with that one. Oh That's God! Nintendo news. That's incredible. God bless you, Nintendo. It's never changed, Nintendo. I mean, definitely changed, never but changed. also never changed. Change your business practices, please, but like, please change immediately, but also never change. Never change. <laughs> uh, but while we're overseas, Friedman. Yeah, so Nintendo's tweeting about hentai, so it sounds like it's time for the weird <laughs> shit. Um, oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus Did it actually work this week? Because I don't think it played last time. Anyway. Yes, um, it worked. We got, we got a worked. bunch of trailers all over the place. One tiny announcement from this morning that I'll get to because the details are still a little shaky. But starting off strong, uh, for anyone who's a fan of Bleach, the author Tite Kubo did almost nothing in the last 10 years except write a single one-shot chapter of a project called Burn the Witch. And the head editor of Shonen Jump loved it so much. He's like, you know what? Marketing blitz time. Bleach's 10th anniversary is coming up. You're getting a six-episode OVA. You need to write the rest of the manga, by the way. <laughs> Damn. And you're, getting a, you're getting a six-episode OVA. And he's so, like, oh, shit, really? Why? So like, the trailer many... came out for it, and everyone's like, oh. what, what is it? What is the next evolution of Tite Kubo's art style? Because it changed so much during Bleach. And it hasn't changed at all since the end <laughs> of Bleach. So it's just like, it looks like black-haired Orihime and one other character who are witches yeah, in yeah, London yeah. who are fighting dragons that people can't see. And it's kind of Harry Potter-ish where it's like, there's the muggle world and then there's the magic world that no one else can see. It sounds like this oh, li- this guy was literally frozen in carbonite for 10 years. So here's the thing about Tite yeah. Kubo, and I learned this from watching Super Eye Patch Wolf's video on him, is that he's really good at coming up with character designs, but he fucking hates telling stories after he's already designed <laughs> a character. So if you watch Bleach and you wonder, hey, why did he just introduce 15 characters? That's because he just <laughs> drew 15 characters. He's like, fuck it, they're in the plot now. And that's why every... like. Every arc, he introduces another group of like fifteen new characters, because it's just he likes drawing concepts. So having he needs him to go work on only, One Piece, having him do only six episodes is yeah, fine. Right. He can draw seven characters and he's good. He's done. <laughs> nah, Tite Kubo's a bitch. Look, there, man. I said it. He is. He needs. He desperately. So like, there are a couple, a couple of authors in Shonen Jump that are a author and illustrator pair. 
he needs to just pair up with someone to write the stories for him. He just needs to draw. Like, literally do the same thing the Death Note guys did. Because they are phenomenal. He just needs someone to write his stories for him. Because he's just not... He can't do serialization. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on. So this one, this yes. announcement came out this morning. So we knew that the Made in Abyss sequel movie, which was already out in Japan, was finally getting the actual releases in like three theaters finally. in the South U.S. where theaters are still yes. open. Yes. Um, they announced expanded theaters across the U.S. Hurt place me where theaters again. Are open. Hurt more, me again. I need to feel pain. <laughs> Sorry for me. More importantly, <laughs> they confirmed that starting the same Friday that Super Mario Sunshine comes out, there would be virtual screenings, but they what failed to indicate what that means. I don't oh know if it's like God. at a set time you can pay to join a live stream for it. Any or money. Like a, I mean, I will. Like if they're just like, oh, Instantly. it's an eight o'clock screen. It's like, cool, I'm, I'm clear my schedule and watch cool. the movie. Yep. Um, but they also gave a, a date range. It seemed like from the from the 18th to like, I think the end uh, or middle of the following week was the 20 something. Point I wonder, is, I wonder if this would be in New Jersey because there are New Jersey theaters opening yo, this weekend. Yo, y'all trying to cry yeah. together though? Yo, let's oh, yeah. cry with masks yeah. on. Yeah. Can handle uh, this? Actually, no, I don't like oh, crying in front of other people. I, I kind of like crying alone. Nah, I'll <laughs> cry with other people. Cry. I prefer to cry alone. That's fine, Tim, was... Tim. You, me, and Val cry yeah, together. Yeah, nothing cry. was more embarrassing than showing Tim and Val My Hero Academia and then getting to like episode three and having to, to avoid crying during the You Can Be a Hero two. It's okay. Scene. Val you also Val cried anyway, so it didn't. No, matter. Like, I already saw that episode. I didn't. I didn't even register it as an emotional moment the first time I watched it. And then I was like, I can't cry in front of these guys. I'm trying to pitch this as a so, hype show in an so You don't understand. Hold on, hold on. No, nothing's worse than literally watching this show. With Leslie, and I get to that part, oh I am, I am lo like borderline bawling. I look at her, she's I dead, bone dry. I'm like, how can, how, you who are you? Monster. Like, no. I have seen you cry at like less, lesser things, and she's like, I don't know, this just didn't hit me. I'm like, I don't even know who yeah. you are anymore. Yo, so they just, we, we just experience emotion differently sometimes. That's true. All right, Tyler. Dude, dude, dude. Uh, Tyler, like, I will say on the same side of that. Um, Val was that like when we were showing Val's sister the My Hero scene that episode uh, three. Val was pretty bone dry, partially because we were watching in English. But that's right, it's a bunch of fake people <laughs> delivering the lines. <laughs> but I, but regardless, it was still like I was like, oh, I'm surprised. Uh, how not could y'all not? I literally cry every time. Like there's uh, like a <laughs> very every time. there there are very a small handful of scenes yep that will get me going and that is one of them dude so that, flip side of that telling the Todoroki, it's your power isn't it that shit gets me yes oh, but flip side of that something like val didn't cry and i was surprised like i only have to say one word and i'm pretty sure freeman Please and tyler right i already know what you're thinking <laughs> about. i don't want to think about it anymore we've talked about it before but like if I just say one word, I could probably get a serious reaction of everyone here, and Val would like run upstairs screaming and start beating the shit out of me for saying yeah, it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to ask you to stop. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask you to stop. It's a little too on point, but like I'm that's a made the best thing that just instantly. I'm upset now. I, I'm upset. Why did I? All right, all right. Well, I'll get you more upset. So, Crunchyroll Expo was this weekend. We talked about this already, though, so it can't hurt too much. Uh, briefly, I kind of. I kind of alluded to it in our group chat, but let me explain in full detail what happened. So Crunchyroll really wants their shit to be hyped. So they put all their trailers up first, but slowly reveal to us that none of the shows they're trying to hype up with trailers <laughs> are ready for trailers yet. So Shield Hero 2, which up until now has not had a confirmed release date, they came in and said, guys, it's coming out in 2021. <laughs> And Didn't it's just like, know okay, that? Well, like, what am I supposed to do with this information? Like, <laughs> we're still a ways out from 2021. We're and still you failed seasons to confirm away. January. So we're like, we're at least six months out. What do you got to show us? And it was a bunch of still images and recap of the last season. Oh my God. Nothing new was in this trailer. So I was I'm beyond. I didn't question. watch any of these trailers, by the way. And then the next one I was expecting more from because Dr. Stone 2 comes out like January. So we're three Stone months out. Wars like, are... Where real trailers would come out. And this one was 50% zooms on still images, and the last <laughs> half was quick cuts of new footage. So they're getting there, but this was not by any extension an exciting trailer to watch. Sounds like it wasn't that exciting. It's a very Crunch exciting Expo show to watch. watch. Anyway, um, the last one was I was waiting to see this one because Crunchyroll now has two potential flops in their hands. 
Tower of God was not as good as everyone hyped it up to me. And a lot of people really don't like God of High School. So what's the next Webtoon project? Is there going to be another one? And they con <clears throat> they confirmed that Noblesse is the next one. Uh, so this one is not... As far as I know, it's not a Shonen Battle anime. So it's going to be the first one that's like different. Anything else. So we'll see what happens to this one. Because like, there's only so many times they can have lukewarm responses before they stop trying. But yeah, we'll get to God of like... High School in a, in a little... Yeah, I feel yeah, we'll get, we'll double back to that. But I feel like at least from the webtoon side, they're getting so much promotion off of even garbage anime. So I feel like they might continue promoting anime to get made just because it brings people on their site to read stuff. Right. Um and there were a bunch of other announcements of different shows that Crunchyroll has acquired for various seasons, but I'll bring it up like as we get to those seasons because not all of them were super noteworthy and the ones that were they revealed so little I'm not sure if I'd watch them. So we'll find out as the seasons go by. Uh but one last bit of weeb shit. So uh, I'm not sure if you guys know how significant the series I'm about to bring up is, but the Melancholy Haruhi Suzumiya was the first anime that got me like watching anime. I'm talking like not DBZ, not Pokemon. This was sorry, Freeman. Just ahead. to clarify, do you mean significant for you or in general? No, uh, both for me as well as the anime community. Okay, large. gotcha. So in in 2006, everyone is still watching your standard like you know Magical Girl, whatever. But like the whole idea of just this is a show about high school students at a high school. Like, almost Slice of Life was kind of non-existent prior to this. And Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya blew up the world. Everyone was doing the fucking dance from that show all over the place. You had prisons in Korea were doing it. It was wild. Um, and it kind of started the boom of light novel adaptations. So I was reading the books when they were coming out. I think I got up to the fifth one before they had made that into a movie. Uh, and then... The author had gotten very close to ending a series, and he's like, I'll be back next month to finish it with the next book. And then he just kind of stopped, and nothing happened. And then the last season of the show happened, and just it's been falling silent. This show is now starting to be... It's Most people have forgotten about it by now, to be perfectly honest, but this was like the show in 2006. And the author has just come back and said, you know what, I'm going to finish the series. So he's coming back to write the next book. What finally. has he been doing? Nothing? Um, I have absolutely no idea. He. Okay has worked on a couple of the short stories, but he just didn't want to get back to the Haruhi series. Gotcha. Um, but the reason that this is important for, I don't know if you'll ever watch Tim, but this was the show that got Kyoto animation on the map. This was their first oh big. So I'm really hoping there's no, there's no way Kyoto animation would work on it, but I'm hoping that this book coming out warrants enough hype for another season of the show. Why do you say there's no way? Because Kyoto animation has a new policy where they only adapt shows or media that they purchase the entire creative rights to because gotcha. they used to get into a lot of issues with katakawa who was the publisher for a lot of their original source material like i'm trying to think of a recent example like when they didn't want to do re-zero season two right away like that was a hundred percent on the publisher saying nah we don't want to milk this franchise yet like wait let it let the hype play out a bit and then we'll do season two so the wait is a hundred percent on them Gotcha. So for someone like Kyoto Animation, who like they want to pump out a project while the team is still together, to have to deal with the publishers like, nah, wait six years. It's just unbearable. Gotcha. Like if they have a director who wants to do something, they're going to do it. Gotcha. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they'd make an exception for this. Do you think or no? I don't know. Also, considering the original director unfortunately passed away oh, during yeah. the fire, so uh, I think Kyoto Animation has cut their ties with the project. They even had a spinoff anime, but they gave it to another studio. So I imagine that. If oh, there in was that case, one, yeah, yeah. If there's Kyoto precedent, Animation. then yeah, there's no way. Yeah. Um, is that? But that's it for the weeb shit. <laughs> All right. So as as has been the case, uh, when we do podcasts every two, or in this case three weeks, we have a lot of things that we've watched and played in the meantime that we'd love to talk about. We're gonna try doing it a little different this time. We're just gonna name things. Uh, we have a list in our show notes. We're gonna name through them, and anyone who's watched them or to play them can talk about them. Um, but to start off first, it's something not on the list. Um, the reason we waited three weeks to do this is because uh, last Sunday, my now wife and I got married. Um, and yes, all of these guys were there. It was a good backyard thing. Um, but leading up to it, we all got together, at least the guys did, uh, and we watched two movies. And we'll talk about one. I'm going to sneak one in here first, Friedman. Oh, yeah, if you want to just drag it up to the top, we'll talk about these movies first. Yeah. So we watched two movies as a group, uh, Day of the Wedding, me and the, the boys, plus Aiden, because <laughs> Aiden was not a groomsman, but he was kind of along for the ride. <laughs> I was VIP. <laughs> um, we rewatched. Had everyone there seen it? I don't remember. Yeah. 
I think so. Um, we watched Happy Gilmore. Uh, man, that movie is still <laughs> that movie's still really funny. It's still just as goofy as the day I saw it. Um, I it's it's so easy to forget so many like so many of the scenes are iconic. Like, I mean, you can't go to any golf facility in the world where someone within the first. 24 hours like every single day someone at every golf facility pretends to do the run-up hit or at least talks about it i was gonna say mention that it's all in the hips or the it's all All in the hips hips. or you're gonna die clown um (laughs) mista mista yeah (laughs) um just killed the mista mista lady or just uh shooter mcgavin like just doing a little yeah, yeah that became a meme the rest of the fucking uh, wedding just <laughs> yeah, <it's... Pow>! <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's just such a memeable movie, and it's so funny, and it's a good wholesome time. Um, so yeah, that was a ton of fun. And then the night before, when everybody was hanging out, uh, Freeman was like, "Hey, it's it's hot and humid outside. Why don't we watch a fun movie in the nice, cool air conditioning?" And unlike Happy Gilmore, I think only. Freeman, you or like Tyler, you'd seen it, right? Tyler yeah, had, seen it. The only two had seen it. Um, Freeman put on Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure partially because the third one came out. Um, and while I haven't seen the second or third one yet, uh, the first one was a really was a really fun time. It wasn't like a 10 out of 10 or anything, but it was just a good, fun no, 80s it's movie. A goofy 80s movie, yeah. Um, I don't know, would you? Well, you guys had already seen it before, and Freeman obviously suggested. Aiden, what do you think? I thoroughly enjoyed it. That it was, it was a good movie. It was a movie where you, where you can just turn your brain off and just have a good time. Excellent. It was most <laughs> triumphant. Yeah, no, it's just, it's it's a fun, goofy movie where it's not you're not paying attention to the plot. You're paying attention to see which name is someone going to mispronounce next. Right. Is this Sigmund Freud guy for real? What about Socrates? So uh, Socrates. Socrates was like MVP, MVP. of that whole movie. For real. MVP. <laughs> Yo, he. They were the only ones that understood him at a spiritual level, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, isn't Joan of Arc so good? I just it, isn't Joan of Arc Noah's Noah's wife? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Um, oh, but yeah, man. Bill and Ted One is a great movie. It's especially even better if you if you haven't seen Keanu Reeves acting when he's young. This is quite a trip because he doesn't act like this in movies anymore. Except, except for Three, which just came out. And Tyler, I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but I actually watched it on Saturday. And without spoiling anything, Keanu Reeves had a tough time acting like Ted again. Really? Yeah, because he yeah. probably because he played mostly. He plays very serious, pressing role roles. To get goofy again, like yeah. Also, um, also his life has been filled with tragedy since. We understand the uh, the ballad of Keanu Reeves. The ballad <laughs> of Keanu Reeves. But all in all, Bill and Ted Three was pretty good. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't bad. It did enough to be unique as well as also have a good number of callbacks to at least the first movie. But definitely worth the watch. All right, Freeman. These are mostly these are you and other these are other things I've never done. So I'm gonna run to the bathroom. But you guys, right, no you guys enjoy the Persona saga. So oh, real man. quick before we talk about okay, a real good topic, go. I'll talk about Persona Five. Man, is this episode one of the podcast again? Yes, it's season one of the podcast. <laughs> I got, so I I cleared the original final boss of Persona Five on Saturday. I forgot mm-hmm. how annoying this was. And I forgot how bad some of the guides are online for it because I was like, shit, what's his weakness? I don't want to one shot myself. I'm like, oh, he's invulnerable to psychic. I'm like, okay, cool. You, I'll just use that on everyone, except it's like, nah, he reflects psychic. And I Damn. use my like times three times attack, extra spell boost. Let's one shot this dude and he reflects it back me and ends a one hour run. So the fight was longer than I thought it was going to be because I had to restart in the middle, but I finished, like, I'm done with vanilla Persona 5 content. I'm now in the extra month of the game. Mm. So far, right. wild um trying to beat it asap because i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of just like sick and tired of playing persona 5 for five months i want to go play something else <laughs> gee so, it's like season one of the podcast all over i can wrap this up soon even though i keep talking about this but that's for final fantasy 5 which of you is playing final fantasy 3 slash 6 that, that is me. a tyler three me, over Bob. six days 
Yeah. So, why, are you about to ask me why I am playing this? That's the exact question I'm going for. What inspired <laughs> you to play Final Fantasy VI? Um, so, as the listeners will probably might remember, I started playing L.A. Noir, And then it got to my point where I, like, was forcing myself to play the game. And then it got to the point where I was like, I can't play this fucking game. <laughs> And so I was like, oh, one day um, I was watching uh, this um, this YouTube channel that I watch every so often where dude talks about a bunch of like, you know, old games and stuff like that. And they were talking about, um, or he was talking about like um, Final Fantasy VI. And I'm like, you know, I haven't played any of like the old, old Final Fantasy games. Like I've played literally every Final Fantasy game for the PlayStation on up. Let me give this a try. So I acquired it, and uh, <laughs> I decided to give it a shot. So I was ask um, you're playing the Steam version, but I, I see you've acquired it. I have acquired it uh, through through a friend, you know. Uh, Does your friend wear an eye patch and have a peg? Yes, up? and have a tri corner hat and a parrot, <laughs> and a best friend named Smee. But um, anyway, about the game. I I I don't know. I for some reason like I was just like you know what fuck it let me let me give this a shot, right? And uh, so here I am. I'm only like two hours into it. Um, I kind of like the story. The story is kind of interesting actually. So I've only played the first half of six, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed what I played thoroughly. But six has a problem. Like I highly recommend playing six continuously and do not take a break. And you'll learn this. I don't know how much you've already seen of the other characters in the game, but every character controls uniquely. Like, there's oh, one dude who's I... a straight up Street Fighter character, and every time I play the game, I forget what his combos were. Literally had that issue today, actually. Aiden watched me fucking literally whiff this character like a hundred times. And he's like, Tyler, you gotta do this. And I'm like, oh. That means like, this it's is each, dumb. Each character has a learning curve, and because of that, it creates this huge intimidation factor trying to jump into a half completed playthrough of the game but overall six is like it was way better than i was expecting dude no buo comes with the <laughs> bangers dude oh my god like the opening scene with the uh, where they're riding the chocobos into uh the town i'm like bro 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 <laughs> woo -woo 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 yeah, I, I was like, this is awesome. I, I dig this a lot. Um So yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 digging it so far. But that that's that's why I started playing it though. Gotcha. One day I'll get back oh. to it, but high school me's quest to beat all the Final Fantasies is on like Oh, I'm favorite. definitely not going to do that myself. I'm yeah, I'm not that. I'm not suffering through Final Fantasy one and two. Fuck no. No. No, no, no. But instead, I didn't suffer. I'll move on. Um, because this next game is me also. Wait, hold on. Is uh, Tim back? Oh, yeah. Is Tim back? Okay, yeah, good. I want to make sure you're back with us. Oh, I just didn't want to oh, yeah. the Final Fantasy talk, but I'm totally here I for I heard this. him cough, and I was like, oh, he's back. We can move oh, gotcha. on. Um, yeah, so I played through Titanfall 2 because, again, I was trying to procrastinate uh, L.A. Noir. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Actually, I'm I'm procrastinating L.A. Noir, which I I'm officially I'm just putting that away. I don't want to play it anymore. Uh, and Origami King. Um, oh wow, uh, Origami King. Yeah, I started that. Like, okay, like I don't know. It's not it's not hit me in the spot that I want to. But I'm gonna. I don't think I've given it the fair college try so far. I think it's funny. Like I think like as far as like some comedy things are concerned, like that's all I really have to say about that. But I'll wait before I give like any sort of like actual review on that. Gotcha. But uh, Titanfall two, fucking as the kids say, slap. Stand by for Titanfall. Oh. Stand by for Titanfall. When she said it at the end of the campaign, Yo! I literally shit myself. I was Dude! like, this is amazing. It's one of the hypest moments in like any game of campaign I've played in the last few years. And like, uh, you're I like waiting the... all camp. Oh, sorry, keep going. All campaign. All yeah. All campaign to hear it. Yeah, that and the smart pistol, and I'm like, this is no! awesome. 
It's such it a was, good ending. Oh, it, it was good. I I like I like that game from beginning to end. Even the singularity part of the game, I thought that was still yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, buddy. Like, have you guys? I know Aiden probably has. Have you played Singularity? Either of you? Uh, oh, I uh, have not. I did a million years ago. Oh yeah. When, it's one of those singularity. Singular. It's literally that section of Titanfall Two, but it's the entire game. Oh, was that this good? Game. I kept wanting to yeah. buy it, it was on sale, and then it was just never on sale for the longest time. This is this is one of those generic shooters from the Xbox 360 era mm -hmm. that I played on a whim. The, yeah, I remember this game coming out. I've actually never played this game. The concept oh, it's on was cool. fun, but like I don't know, it Titan wasn't Fall really that better. great. It was like life strange with gameplay. Does do it a bit better. Uh. That being said, I thought it was stupid because you know it's time travel, but it's fine. <laughs> but it's only a it level. It's fun. It's only a level. And they use well, it really it well. Core, I thought it was core gameplay. Is it only for a part of it? Dude. Yeah, it's only for a one level. Titanfall wow, 2's campaign. I am not campaign. spending thirty dollars on this shit. Okay, great. Oh wait, no, no, on... wait for singularity. Oh, no, not singularity. Yeah. Okay, he's talking oh, about no, singularity. Titanfall. Is the entire game. That's yeah. what I thought. Okay. But it's also oh, yeah. it, it's also not a very good game. Like it's fine. It's just it's nothing not, extraordinary. I'm spending thirty dollars on a game that everyone tells me is just okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Don't bother. Years um, ago. I bought no. Titanfall two. That being said, I bought Titanfall two for ten dollars worth. Worth Tyler, for that campaign. Would you would you have spent sixty dollars on that game? Yes. Yes. I would have spent sixty dollars on that. <laughs> that means, if that I knew means, that, that means that Tyler will also be with me buying Titanfall three. So I'll have someone to play multiplayer out. with as soon as uh, that game comes out. I think EA is going to completely. Aiden, I don't fuck give a over fuck what series. you're saying yeah. right now. Yeah, no. <laughs> and they already yeah. to cannibalize la, 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 la. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they released Titanfall 2 between Battlefield and Call of Duty. Aiden, I was, th I was there. <laughs> I, I know you were. Do not speak the ancient I magic. Was, <laughs> I was there when you were written. in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> nah, it's it's serious. Yo, we didn't. Oh, we didn't talk about that, did we? Fucking Madden. You want to talk what? about Madden real what quick? Madden? No, it's Madden and UFC. Um, oh, really? so, yeah, a month. So a month after, for those at home who don't know, a month after the new Madden game and the new UFC game came out from EA. EA patches the game, and people go, what the fuck? There are real-world commercials in this game now. And EA's like, well, yeah. What do you think we are, <laughs> not scumbags? Yeah, what do you think we are? We know you paid are $60 for people? this game. Yeah, Hey, wait a minute. Money. Wait, and they, like, look even closer, like, after the ad's over, and they're like, wait a minute, this says Madden 2020 on it. Wait, this I thought that happened Madden with Madden. 21. Wait, I thought that was a Madden 20 story where it said Madden oh, no, it 19. Happened again. Oh, it happened again this time. Oh, sick. Even yeah. better. Even better. And they're like, wait a minute. These character models don't look like the actual players. <laughs> what the fuck, EA? And they're like, ah. And then <laughs> the classic, <laughs> when when I saw, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, that Yang, Yang Yaz video. <laughs> How the one developer, after seeing that uh, it got a two star on Google, and they're like, "Yo, at least it ain't a one star," <laughs> and then no, you it know got what? immediately downvoted to one star. Good. Um, <laughs> you know what this is? This is Nintendo. This is someone who earns too much money, and they just go, eh, "System ain't broke. We're earning lots of money from idiots who buy a sports game every year. Why bother?" Yeah, it only took oh, motherfuckers I, I, like. I have a counterpoint to this. Their their difference from Nintendo is that they are a monopoly. No one else can make football games so, or well, NFL games, I guess. Yeah, but the NFL like, doesn't can. care. They can. Oh, make yeah, they just can't be games. licensed by the NFL. Yeah, yeah, like Pro Evolution Soccer um, was actually it's still a big contender against FIFA, and they get around it by like you know doing like generic teams that sound like real teams but everybody's like yo pro evolution soccer is like amazing and it forced fifa to like actually get better yeah um, problem there is no these days no one's willing to invest in starting up a football spinoff plus that's a lot true. of it is just like the nfl has a certain idea like you need, if, if we're gonna license out we expect to get whatever return on it we expect yep. to get like 
the six million. You didn't get that get money. They don't, okay. they don't really yep, care. Exactly. Like they, you, I mean. you get what they wanted on funding. They don't really care about the quality of the games as the like sole licensor. So there's no incentive to be better. And at this point, the only incentive is make more money. Yeah. Exactly. Like Nintendo. <laughs> evil. <laughs> no, no, I think evil. Nintendo. I, I, like I said before, Nintendo sees their games as art and just won't sell their art at a reasonable price. Well, well the fucked. end result be, is the ending up the same, where Pretty they refuse much. to change. The future but refuse to change. But they're different types of assholes. But yeah. at the same time, we're suffering equally. Oh well. All right, Speaking we are not suffering. Time, right? Titanfall 2's campaign is fantastic. I'm glad you got yeah, to play it finally. That Tyler. was not. That was not suffering. It now was we just need great. Freeman to play it. Eventually, it'll take literally he two play days. To boost shit, bro. So I've revised the list. The list is still finish Persona Five, beat Witcher. I'm dropping Persona Four as an immediate must play because I realize how much time I'm sinking into just a couple games. Cyberpunk is now third on the list. I'm keeping slot four open. I don't know what's going to come after that, but I'm pretty sure. Honestly, I'm playing. Actually, scratch that. Persona Five, Super Mario Sunshine. Witcher three, Cyberpunk. Oh, Honestly, God. if you, you can be you mean Mario in a week. See, but here's the thing: like, you could easily just slot Titanfall two in literally anywhere. If you're like, I don't feel like playing Witcher, you could just be like, I'll just play a level of Titanfall. Yeah, I'll play a Titanfall level. Titanfall is Titanfall. legitimately like five hours tops for the campaign. Uh, wait, I'll tell you how long it took me to uh, to oh, be. still has installed. Yeah, yeah, I can't check my clock because I played multiplayer that game so. Uh, yeah, it took me sure, like six hours. I'm pretty sure it got gifted to me by someone on this podcast. Yes, it did. I'm pretty sure Tyler bought it for you, or I did. I don't remember which of us did, but someone I did. I feel bad not playing it. But l that's what I mean. Like, you don't have to be like, ah, this will be the time of the year where I play Titanfall 2. It's more like, I have an hour. <laughs> I'll play a level of yeah. Titanfall. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I did, pretty much. That's how I did it. Um... um Oh, yeah, this is um, another you thing, isn't it, Tyler? This is another this. me thing. Yo, The Boys, season two came out. Completely forgot it came out. I remember Friday. I <laughs> What did I do? I was about to go do something, like, important for the morning, and I literally just dropped everything, and I just watched this. Nice. Shirked all my duties that I was supposed to do, and I just watched it. Um, But I didn't watch the whole season, so they're doing – they released the first three episodes, and they're going to release – um, each episode on Friday until God. the season's up. So it's like it's airing, essentially. Oh, yeah. Real, real quick, just to jump back to our Xbox S story. Apparently, November 10th is the release date for that console. Ooh, that's uh, close. That's disturbingly close. Good thing. Oh, I don't also, get... we're getting a Dune trailer tomorrow. Oh, Since good thing I don't care get... about that movie. Well, oh, Val and her dad are talking about it, so. Oh. Gotcha. Anyway, keep going with the boys. Sorry. Yeah, the boys. I don't know. Have you guys any? I, I know Aiden might have. I can't remember. I haven't watched a new season. I haven't yet. watched it. That's uh, on well, my... Have you watched the first season? Yeah. Okay. I like. It's good. It's really good, actually. Yeah, but I I, I, have... I haven't watched any new stuff yet. Uh, what were you going to say, Tim? No, I was just going to say the boys is on the sh list of shows that I've been told by a number of people to watch. Oh yeah, as a person who's read the entire comic, um, I would advise that it's probably one of the best adaptations I've ever like read or watched or whatever compared to what I read. Wow. Yeah, I I thought it was really good. Um, and I think this season so far is doing pretty well. Um, I don't think it's as reviewing as well as the first season so far but i'm i mean i'm still digging it they took a completely different direction than the comic but that's what i like though i don't want to see the same thing and i don't think what was written would be would work that would, well on screen yeah so like i'm i'm more than fine with what's going on on screen uh, but yeah, that's that's all I gotta say about that's all I got to say about that. About the boys, the boys. You should watch it if you're into superhero stuff, because it's definitely not your traditional superhero stuff. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to watch season one. I just straight up cannot find time. Yep. Yeah, they are hour long episodes. Ooh, they're hour long too. Yep. 
Maybe I'll watch start three doing anime that. episodes in that time. Maybe I'll start doing yeah, it's it's, it's worth time. though. It's a val. It's a valuable it hour. Is. All right, I'll prioritize its consideration. Uh, what's the next one? Oh, it's oh, Fire, Fire Force. Force. So this is a bunch of anime that I threw on here because I've been, at the very least, trying to keep up with some anime, especially now that my job is very slow again. Um, Fire Force. No one else is watching this season, correct? I'm three episodes behind. Oh, you're catching up, Freeman. Guess yeah, what? Yeah, watching this weekend. Um, Guess what? What? End of. So I just watched episode ten today. You yeah. will learn many things about the evangelist and what the fuck is going on at the tabernacle. Okay, I'm hoping they have a reasonable <laughs> explanation pattern. I'm on episode six, and I want to clarify. So there is that the crazy girl who's got the crown covering her eyes. Mm-hmm. She gets ambushed by, Ar- I always called him King Arthur. He gets ambushed by Arthur, and then she turns to him unprompted. Arthur hasn't asked a single question of her. He's just trying to attack her with a sword, and she says, "Huh." We'll be the first ones to gather all eight pillars before you can. So she dropped this nugget. Not only are there eight <laughs> pillars, but gathering all eight seems to matter and speed is of, of the essence. None of these were asked questions. She just hands out this information to Arthur, dumbest member of the Fire Force. So I don't know if we're supposed to assume everyone knows it or no one knows it, but like uh, it's also everyone. weird. It's weird exposition to just kind of dump out there. But that's you're not wrong, but everyone part. knows it. Cause... Also, I realize you're right. Pink-haired girl is not best girl. She's just nope. very annoying right now. Yep, correct. I thought she'd um, be best girl. My radar was very off. Nope. I, it's like you thought. Freeman, all the comments said the same thing. I remember reading the weekly anime, our anime threads, and everyone's like, yo, she's pretty good. And then we got to the end of that arc, and everyone's like, man, she fucking sucks. Damn, she just makes bad life choices. Very like That's bad. all I can say about her. Like, character design, fine. Ability, phenomenal. Life choices, questionable at best. Ability, very weird. Um, But yeah, so uh, Fire Force is still gorgeous. Uh spoiler the end of the episode 10 or halfway through episode 10 there's a pretty good fight it's another we're we're testing out some powers we haven't seen since uh the season one um and we're now moving towards a huge big mystery which is very exciting is um, it what, what is the meaning of the adola burst no it's more <laughs> like uh you're what gonna caused get to, great calamity freeman you're gonna get to episode 10 and uh what the evangelist is is so much more than we thought <laughs> all right cool because I'm, I'm, like they set up a cool world and they haven't touched on like the world aspect oh d- so freeman uh um, the last thing i saw is they mentioned they're going outside of the like tokyo kingdom I'm like, yes Good, so that's what the tabernacle is you're gonna find out what the oh god you're not even there yet you're gonna find out what the what's something called the tap i can't i'm not gonna spoil it um Thank I'm you. trying to think of how to do it, and I'm like, no, you're going to find a cool location that has a lot of lore implications. There's a big... This next short arc that just finished in 10 is a lot of exposition. Um, gotcha. There's a lot of good stuff that comes up. As long as there's some internal consistency, then I'm A-OK with There it. is, there is, and you're going to learn a lot. Because this author's not known for it. No, I, I look forward to you catching up, because whether or not you like the answers, there are plenty. Gotcha. Um and I, I would look forward to talking about what's happened. Um, but speaking about what's happened, uh, God of High School also, I am now oh, the you, only have person... Have you officially dropped it? Yeah. I, I have officially dropped God of High School. Okay. I haven't seen yesterday's episode, but I'm... Oh, you are? Oh, this. okay. Um, yeah, I no, I'm still yours. watching the show. Um, man, this show is certainly... Okay. It's a show. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a show. show. We're I'm, fighting. I'm yeah. keeping up with it mostly just because... I don't want to say like I'm super invested, but I'm like invested enough to keep going, I guess. Uh, there was actually a pretty big, not twist, but a pretty big thing happened again at the end of, it was like the week of things happening at the end of the last episode. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, God of High School, again, Freeman, when you watched yesterday's episode, some shit happens. <laughs> oh boy. That is actually like big lore implications. And there's a huge... There's, there's fucking cool stuff. good because this show is doing the whole thing where it's like we're not really going to reveal to you what the fucking tournament's about in the first place so, oh, so I'm hoping there's no answers in regards to that it's more like a term you've heard thrown around a lot suddenly people go oh look that's happening right now oh like spoiler we've been talking about this key hey hey there's a key did you, did you know there's a key <laughs> um yeah. no but it's god of high school's 
honestly, the action isn't even like. Look, so I'll I'll put it this way: I've watched a lot of bad anime. I drop very bad anime, <laughs> but will continue to watch like questionable anime. God of High School is not a bad anime. No, it's not. But at the same time, I'm not willing to call it a great anime. It's I... entertaining, and that's more than enough for what it needs to do. You know what? Can I? Here's a thought on why the fights seem so good. I think it's really the sound design. Um, a lot of, I feel like a lot of anime just does like the swishing of like you know Dragon Ball, where it's like swish, swish, swish of these punches. There's yeah. no real impact. I think the sound design of this Wait, no real impact. Are we acting like this fucking sound effect doesn't come from DV? Where is it? <laughs> that or like someone got but punched. That, with? No, but that doesn't sound real. Oh no! God of High School's oh, no, sound these are effects. Like fifth on skin. This kind really of noise. sounds like the crunch of a guy's fist slamming into that dude's face. Um, and I, because f- like watching today, I'm like, this is a good fight, but the animation isn't actually so godlike like it felt like at the beginning. Um, maybe it's deep. just also I down mean, right like now. But four or five had like that really artistically designed fight, yeah. and none of them have come close to that since then. Um, and I think it might still be more of it just animation budget being saved, but the sound design is really carrying these fights where you really feel like these guys are beating the shit out of each other. Um, but yeah, God of High School is okay. I don't know, Freeman. Do you have any anything else to add, Tyler? You dropped it, obviously. I mean, yeah. Pretty much covered all the bases. I'm just here to watch the fights at this point. I've I like mentally checked out in regards to the plot. Like the characters are all like interesting enough. I don't hate any character. This isn't like they're just Tower generic. God where I watched the show because I hated Rachel. This is like whatever. <laughs> These are just yo but what? fighting in a tournament. For real though, like, I didn't watch Tower of God because I liked the main character. It's more just like. What the fuck is Rachel's deal? Is that I watch movie? Tower and, of God? And then it ends with, yo, fuck Rachel. I want that bitch to die in a fucking shoe so, somewhere. So, like, again, I'll say the same thing about Tower of God. It's not like, a bad actually. show, but it's not, like, particularly great at what it's trying to do. Yeah. It's definitely interesting, and the voice cast is stellar. But if you got if you got enough time for 12, 20-minute episodes, maybe it's worth a shot. So Just so you understand our anger. On the flip side, a show that is absolutely worth every minute... <laughs> Ah, uh, and this is a show everyone is uh, watching. Misfit of Demon Academy. Uh, Aiden and I need to actually, as soon as the podcast ends, hopefully, are gonna watch the newest episode because we're actually behind for once. Yep. Um, Press X to fucking hell. Man, <laughs> what do you mean? Whoa! What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? No, he's saying about the quality of the show, not that we're gonna watch it. No, yeah, no, I know. Oh, okay. I know, I know what he's saying. I see you. I've never seen a show so schizophrenic than this. <laughs> schizophrenic? He's not, he's I mean, that's not it. wrong. I'm, I'm <laughs> a personality <laughs> disorder. <laughs> doesn't know what the fuck it wants to be. Whatever it wants no, to be, I'm along for the no ride. Notwithstanding, I think it's an entertaining show, and it's keeping my interest with like, what like with what's going on. God, I need all of you to watch the irregular at Magic High School, which, by the way, same fucking name as the Misfit of Demon Academy. Because this show is literally just doing the same thing, but it's like cutting out all the bad parts of it. So that it's great. It's no, great. You're, no, because that means that means you think there are good parts of the irregular at Magic High School. I'm saying, this is only the parts that aren't bad in one show. Listen, no, no, no listen. This is a hot take. Oh, here we go. Very spicy. I think, I think Irregular and Magic High School is a good show. <laughs> Look, I, my, once they got to the ending and explained what the fuck the main character's deal was, I'm like, okay, I'm glad I watched this show. This was entertaining. But every time I hear What's-Her-Face go, oh, Onisama, they don't understand how strong your magic is. I wanted to fucking kill myself. And his sister says it every episode. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't the best thing. Muted, but thoroughly enjoyed that show too. Yes. I look. I'm not going to go around and say people shouldn't watch the regular Magic High School. I'm saying people should watch it for their baseline of what a like high school battle harem anime should be. This like irregular is the golden standard. You have to be either more entertaining or like less shitty than this to register on my radar anymore. Uh... And I'd and I'd say Misfit is is better because it's not. It's not doing the things that I didn't like. That's a have, weird you, have you ever seen Freezing? 
I was oh, told shit. I was told not to. <laughs> I was told oh, not man. To. <laughs> I mean, you probably shouldn't. <laughs> Yo, fr I like Freezing. Freezing is another good show. Is it because it has titties in it? I mean, that's I believe that's the entire like plot. It. It's not, that's not a negative, but like, Freezing is <laughs> Sorry, what is this like... show? I'm interested now. Titties. It's called Freezing. It's, it's titties. It's I, I, it. it it's high school whole idea. DxD underscore Freezing. Yeah, basically. And oh, it's on Funimation, but that means it's going to be vibration. censored. That's lame. Uh, I, it's 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 another high school <gasps> Wait, battle I fucking Googled thing. Freezing anime, and the first thing that Google says people also ask is people also ask is freezing a harem anime? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> people also ask. <laughs> people. Yeah, and then the free, second free question is good freezing show. good anime? <laughs> Is it good is... anime? Yeah. No. Is it culture? Yes. <laughs> All right. Hell yeah, brother. Seven on my anime list, which could mean literally anything, but it usually doesn't mean anything good. <laughs> We're talking about Misfit, though. Tyler, why don't you like Misfit? I, I, not, I didn't say I liked it. I just don't think it's as funny as y'all make it out to be. Oh, no, you're right. This is not a comedy. These two are just enjoying it way more than the rest <laughs> I of them. Like, I no. fucking love this show. Dude, I, this <laughs> is I'm a blast. Watching this. Val and I are just like, I don't understand what this show wants to be. Like, It wants to be like a funny harem anime sometimes, and sometimes it's mad serious, and Tim's like, there's not a serious bone in its body, and I'm there like... There really isn't. What? None of this is serious. Okay, it's everyone except for Anno is whole serious. Show is a meme. He's the part that's funny. Every time he says some like three second rule or some bullshit like that, like yes, it's hilarious. But Dude, no one else okay, is still trying to be funny. Ep okay, hold on. I uh, like me. Okay, Freeman, how far in are you? Um, I hold on. I need how fifty follows. It's the no, that's God of High School. The demon. The Misfit. God damn it. I want to I started typing out the Japanese name and Crunchy was like, nope. So it's kind of about I saw eight last night. Okay. But I need to, oh, okay. Before you make your point. Remember when I got uh Darling and the Franks ruined for me because it skipped an episode in the middle? Okay. So Crunchy yeah. popped up and right from episode six and episode eight. So episode six ends with him like, here's your sword, go oh, fight yeah, we in talked the about this. tournament. And episode eight opens with Hey, so we're the finals are starting. And I was and I'm sitting here like did he just walk out into the finals? Like, how did he get this far already? I'm like, maybe he qualified from this fucking castle fights. I don't know. Whatever. I'll watch this. And the episode was really confusing because I'm like, what's this whole shit with his mom? Like, are they pulling this out of thin air? And then I'm like, wait, I skipped an episode in the middle. So I had to go back and watch episode seven to figure out what the fuck his friend's deal was in the sword fight. And it ruined the whole experience for me. <laughs> okay. That's a crunchy roll problem, though. But also, here's, here's an example of a scene. In episode nine, this isn't a big spoiler at all because the title of the episode is like inter, what is the it? Inter of her something. The mystery <laughs> the of the hero the academy. That's what it's called. It's called the mystery of the there hero you know, academy. Title won't show full titles for some reason. All right. So spoiler alert: there's a hero academy, and we're gonna go hang out there because of course we fucking are. The teacher comes out and is like, "Hey, does anybody know what the deal is with magic that humans use?" And Anos snaps his fingers and on her chalkboard appears demon magic and human magic and it's like how do you not laugh at that of course he's a fucking master of human magic somehow because like why not it's, it's so ridiculous eh. he's okay <sighs> like the he's broken he yeah he's, he's like, you're telling me he knows like, human magic my, my immediate response is of course because yeah, like, I know, and that's funny. Character. Like, I'm not shocked. Like, I don't know. Like, that I'm not shocked either, but of course, like, I'm but it's like it's funny. he's literally a meme. Because when that mm -hmm. scene ends, his fucking, like, his fan club is like, <laughs> oh, that's our, that's our demon king. <laughs> Fuck, it's just like the whole show is a meme. It's so fun. I, I love get it. it. But you hate the high school DXD. Even though that whole fucking show is a meme. I don't like understand you. I hate Issei. I don't understand. Issei, Issei is a bad character. Is he the main character? Yes. Yeah. Well, then yes. there you go. That's why he doesn't like it. If you like Most, Anos, the then it's a good show. Anime, the main character is arguably the worst character. You're not watching it for this guy. In most of these shows, you're watching it for the ladies. Although, in this Here, show, I'm only watching it for Anos. 
I'm just watching him say dumb shit like, oh, do you think dodging my attack would cause it to miss? Like, just his oh, yeah. liners are do you the think, only do you reason think I'm would it cause me to die? <laughs> yeah, like, shit like that is the only reason I'm watching this show. It's like, I just want to see what the next dumb thing he's going to pull off. Like, yeah. again, in episode nine, the teachers are like, yo, man, you got to go 10 days away. But we expect it to take three no, days. Anos is like, Anos is like, what the fuck? Yo, Let's just teleport there. And he clicks his, he snaps his finger, and his whole team teleports there. And they're like, wait, oh, did, wait, that was easy. Wait, wait. I thought Freeman didn't see that episode yet. I haven't. He's just this is no, no, no. This Dang, is but like this is not a spoiler. This is just part just of the experience. Said. You're That's what he watches the entire I'm not, for and you literally just spoiled it. It's right one there. okay, I'm using one line oh as an example. Oh my god. No. I didn't the the point. Point. Oh my god. god damn it. Anyway. Talk about SAO, because that's a quality show. Yo, no, actually, the only reason I put <laughs> SAO on here is because I almost forgot. So we have like three episodes left. They're wrapping up the Alicization plotline. And like they told us they needed to take time off to work on the animations. They took three months and they came back with Alicization part two, part two. And holy crap, Jesus. the fight animation from the like the final boss fight was something else. I don't know what they rendered this thing on, but the CG effects they did on the like big bad were phenomenal. Like, so is it really worth it? Though? Should I actually? You've already it? watched Alicization. And then how far did you get into War of the Spark? Oh, not War of the Spark. Uh, uh, War, of the, War of the Underworld. <laughs> you mean the final load test? Yeah, final load test. Like, I know you have like, PTSD wait. from Nissa and Teferi, but I geez. accidentally said it. Sorry. So you watched Alicization Part Two, Part One, right? Yeah. I part did. Two, Part Two has been worth it. If you didn't like Part Two, Part One, Part Two, Part Two redeems a lot of the issues, while at the same time also creating several of its own issues because it's so. Uh, you know, every so. time I think I escape, it pulls me back. Can. But if you die in the anime, you die in real life. Fucking Christ. So just watch that. Because that fight animation was something else. Also, actually important, they shoehorned the characters from the movie in, so you're going to be very confused if you didn't watch the Sword Art movie. That's a warning to everyone watching this, because outside of that scene, this movie's not relevant at all. All right, let's talk about Yakuza 2. Oh, no, sorry, but yeah, it has been months since I played this game, and then randomly last Friday, when work was super slow, I'm like, "Fuck it, I need to finally beat Yakuza 2." <laughs> and what I hadn't realized was I was basically done with grinding all the side content. So I don't know how many hours I did because Tyler can attest. Like, I spent Friday day, sometimes Saturday, and then Monday for like seven hours while Val and Tyler watched a movie he's about to talk about later. And another movie, and Misfit, I played Yakuza 2 and beat the game. And boy, Yakuza 2 is not as good as Yakuza 0, just like Yakuza 1. Yakuza 0 is still, like, the best game in the series, bar none. But Yakuza 2 is a lot of fun. Um, The story is so... I thought Yakuza 1's story was ridiculous and batshit. (laughs) Yakuza 2 has so many factions working at so I've never seen a series where every single other character than the main character is like well of course I was going to betray you well of course I was going to know you were going to betray me and I was going to betray you and like <laughs> like everyone is working together but no one gives a shit about each other <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible um the final like this the climax of yakuza 2 has so many twists and turns and betrayals and people getting killed i thought i was (laughs) i thought i was watching like the climax of the godfather movies with so many people backstabbing each other it was incredible um fighting system still kind of sucks and man the soundtrack has never been as good in these at least kiwami one and two soundtrack doesn't even touch yakuza zero's (laughs) awesome soundtrack so what do you think is the jumping point of the series? Oh, zero or just play one? zero. Play just zero. Play zero. Play zero. Um, and if you had fun with it, play Kiwami one. Uh, if not, just at least play. Yaku- I would. I would recommend anyone play Yakuza zero. Uh, if you had a lot of fun with it, wait six months, then play Yakuza one. Do it again, Yakuza two. I'm glad I took this break in the middle because, honestly, I'm done with Yakuza for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but like a dragon it's a totally Done different game while. system 
I would actually uh, probably I, I might play like a dragon only because it is a totally different combat system and I don't have to mash X and Y for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I like you could, that's why Yakuza Zero was so much better. You had different styles and different heat moves and stuff. And Yakuza One, Kiwami One and Two are just your Kiryu. Press X to punch. Press Y to kick, and try to find combos and do different like s- different tons of situational heat moves. Like Yakuza Zero's combat system is so much deeper and more fun. Well, I mean, what uh, what year did uh, Yakuza One come? No, out? totally, and that, I'm not saying it's not without reason. Like you can tell yeah. when stuff is shoehorned into these games because they're the Kiwami versions, um, versus the original versus the original One and Two. That's totally fair, but Zero is a simpler story with more expressive gameplay from having two playable characters, and the soundtrack just slaps. So true. Like one is fun, two is fun. I I'm sure I'm not done with the Yakuza series at this point, but nothing has touched zero in terms of quality yet. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. I I'm I'm finally done with it. There is a apparently Kawami also has a Majima story where you play as Majima for a couple minutes. Oh shit! Didn't I'm not even gonna touch it. I don't care. <laughs> Damn. Yo, but Majima. I, ma, dude, Majima Goro is uh Majima is fantastic. Goro. Um, but I realized as Yakuza also as I played more games, I stopped. Like they all had a big side thing to do. Like in Zero, it's either running the club. Or running real estate. I only ran real estate. In two, it's do like a tower defense mini game, or run a club. And I just said fuck it to both of them. It's like, hey, you get good gear, and I'm like, I don't need this gear to win the game. Actually, honestly, the the final boss fight was easier in both phases than in some of the street fights I'd had. Because it's just when you're surrounded by dudes, it's a lot worse than just one dude who you're like, okay, dodge, pa- dodge one punch, dodge one punch, dodge one punch. It's just over and over again. But anyway, good boss design. Yakuza Two, good game. Still play Zero first. <laughs> but you know what is good? Crap! I should have queued up the opening theme to start playing the Attack on Titan theme. <laughs> Um, pop, pop, so, pop, 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 pop. I think we talked about it last podcast. I think, um, but Val and I have started with Freeman and Luigi watching Attack on Titan. For them, it's a rewatch. For me and Val, it's the first time watching. Oh, it's a much needed rewatch. I forgot everything that happens in season one. Um, people were not wrong. The hype was not wrong. This show is very good. Yeah, darn Skippy. Well, now make it to the end, god damn it, so I can... That's, that's the plan. Literally? I watched, we watched I a lot of episodes. I wait to get to a particular episode in three, because then I can finally scream. Uh, yo, actually, you know what? When you get there, when you get to the end, let me know. I want to watch that again. So right, I can okay. literally fucking scream my fucking head off. Because when I watched it, I was watching it in the hospital, and I couldn't, couldn't contain do anything. myself. Oh, boy. I couldn't. Yo, Aiden... Full disclosure, I don't know if I told you this, but I literally didn't look at my tickets for two hours because <laughs> I was watching that. I literally forgot I was even really doing any work. I was literally just in Gagnon 3, just fucking, like, I my eye was glued to my laptop the entire time. Jesus Christ. It was, it was, dude... Aiden, you haven't you haven't it's, watched Attack on Titan. It's not even that season. I'm just waiting like every Stopped season after the first season. Every oh. season has tight moments. Like even season two, which most people will say is the worst season, has one of my favorite moments of the entire series in it. So I've got something to look forward to for this entire rewatch. Uh, Tyler, actually, Aiden, you've also seen it. Tyler, for context, we just met the female Titan out in the field. Ah, uh, all right. And and my first oh, comment to Freeman right. was, "Are we supposed to not know who this is?" <laughs> <laughs> it was it was highly debated when we all saw the first episode, but let's be real here. Everyone had the exact same theory. Yes. Uh, I, d- I did not. Who did wow. you think she was? It blew, it blew my fucking mind when I found out who it Honestly, was. Honestly, I was pretty dumb because I didn't imagine, like, you know, any That's of that. Right. Would you thought it was Armin's me. mom, too, because that was my <laughs> first thought. God damn it. <laughs> I, I thought it was gonna be like an actual new character. I didn't. Hell realize no! It was Come like... on, 
There's too many characters in this show. I haven't even seen who it is oh, for sure, and that, I already man. know. But, like, oh, with I know the there's gonna be more, but so. that show to fucking kill off its characters, like, I didn't fucking know, Is dude. Anyone, like, there's been a lot of people dying. I feel like I already forgot everyone who died. Well, yeah, that's because uh, they just, kill off just, so uh, many of them. Just keep watching. I, I'm sure. Look, go, Freeman, I don't disagree. I, happens, I understand. Like, like, look, the show hypes up Marco's death to death, like, yeah, Beyond, seriously. even though you like generally don't really remember remember Marco lines. For much of what he did. Oh, He's also for trying to give his body to the king. God, yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> uh, since Luigi and Val had never seen it, we showed them Attack on Titan abridged. Man, <laughs> I forgot really how really hysterically really funny that. it was. <laughs> because now, it... what? Go ahead. I was, like, I was just saying how gold it is. Like, listeners, if you haven't watched that. You don't even have to watch Attack on Titan. I watched it years ago when it first came out. Just go watch it. It's like, it's gold. The problem is watching... What do you got there? Some potatoes? All <laughs> do a very good impression of the abridged version of Jean. And he's Ooh, nothing Aaron like that Aaron Jaeger, bo- Jaeger like bombastic. Every time says anything, we're like, oh, look at me. I'm killing Titans. And it's just like, that's not John's character at all. <laughs> It's seriously funny it's to rewatch that and be like, out impressions at the exact same time every time yeah, he's on screen. Like, it's so funny because I watched that so long ago and I was like, oh, these characters are like this. And now I'm like, these characters aren't like this at all, but the, the impressions are still, like, the video is still so funny. Like, Armin being like, ah, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> that's great. Tink, 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 tink. <laughs> oh my god, casters, you tink, tink. <laughs> It's told his legitimacy as a character, and I fucking hate it. <laughs> yeah, because oh, I made that joke while we were watching on Sunday after you and Leslie left from D&D. And, mm. and I'm like, Tink, Tink! And Freeman's like, Tim, he's like the smartest guy in the entire show. And I'm just like, like yeah, but, but Tink, Tink! <laughs> for context, the original scene is Armin is scared shitless and can't even attach the tank because he knows they have to go back out there. And all I can think of is, I'm in charge of the gas tank! <laughs> <laughs> like, stop. This is supposed to be serious. I mean, it's like, he he's not not smart in Attack on Titan Abridged. It's just like... My voice is very nice! <laughs> <annoying. laughs> Armin, Armin, I'm gonna need you. Armin, Armin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> of, of, of Operation... <laughs> Anyway, listeners, it's 20 minutes. It's on YouTube. Go watch Attack on Titan the Bridge. And, you know, after doing that, go watch Attack on Titan. That's also pretty good. Yes, that is that is the final word, is me and Val are both having a great time with it. Uh, we were originally supposed to watch a breath of anime on Thursdays when me, Val, and Luigi, and Freeman get together. And now it's just <laughs> get over, eat dinner, watch Attack on Titan until we leave. <laughs> we'll eventually rotate out shows because this will only last like another six or seven sessions at this pace. Yeah, that's true. We we got through like five or six in one session, so that was a. That was we're a on like episode sixteen or something now. I yeah, think. we're on, we're on the second opening for the first time. I've heard another opening for Attack on Titan in my life. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait for the next one. Speaking of can't wait for the next one, Tyler. As I said oh. before, you and Val watched a movie, but for you, it was the first time to watch Lord of the Rings the, extended right, no, edition. I, I was gonna say, let let me be clear. I have not watched the extendo version. That is three hours and Val 48 was, minutes. I was about to say more than generous enough to correct us in <laughs> saying 48 minutes. Yeah, I'm like 45 and Tyler's like probably like four hours and Val's like, actually, it's three hours and 48 minutes. She didn't even have to look it up. <laughs> didn't even look up from like her phone or anything. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah I. Fucking good movie. <laughs> and so, here's the, so here's the deal. I watched these movies when they first came out like forever ago and like when I was a wee lad. And like I might have watched them again at some point, like it's when been I was almost in middle 20 school. years. That's insane. Yeah, considering man. considering how good a lot of this still holds up. Like I heard you guys talking about it, a lot Dude, of this still holds up pretty good. They're still oh, it, these, are all pretty good. They're still better than a lot of the new movies that have yeah. come out since. All like, right, like sorry, keep going, like, Tyler. Just watching the first one, I'm like, man, it makes Hobbit look like shit. Like yes, like all this. Correct. Like I knew it did before, but like I, it's. I'm it's going fresh back. Now. Well, yeah, I'm going back into these movies like after my tastes have changed so drastically over literally two decades, from me being a child to like a fucking grown ass man now. Um, I can appreciate a lot of the other things now, 
and just like a lot of it. The one thing I did not remember is that the there's like the pacing is a little crazy. Dude, there's so much in this movie. Because there's just so yeah, there's so much stuff that happens. Like every single time the scene with Gandalf happens in the mines, I'm like, oh, the movie's almost over. Dude, and there's literally <laughs> nah, you thought fuck an no, hour and a half left. Left. And it's like, what the fuck? It's like, oh yeah, oh, go to the forest, go to the also, woods, have the fight, also, get away. This was the first time I ever knew in my whole life. I didn't know this. But Val's like, oh yeah, this can't. I was like, because she had the uh, the special edition DVDs. I'm like, yo, why are there four DVDs? Oh, and yeah. she's like, uh, Tyler, it was split up into two DVDs. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. No, yes. it wasn't. Yes. That, the extended editions were too big for DVDs. <laughs> yeah, and that, I have oh, never in my life. Moron, dude. <laughs> Never this have one. I You're right. ever. Oh my god! <laughs> it ends at the Council of Elrond. I remember that. You're totally right. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, no. She even said that. She said like, she's like, as it as that scene faded, she's like, all right, this is where we switched to disc two. If we had this, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? Final Fantasy. <laughs> Do like, we... This is bullshit. You know, it's Tyler. This. What's going on here? <laughs> This is a grand adventure, Tyler. Oh, it was a We're grand going and, on an adventure. And then, so it's, not to derail your story, but if you ever had the luxury of watching Titanic on VHS, it was two. It was also two oh, tapes. Oh yeah! Wow. I think that was that. I remember my tape too. Yeah, my my mom rented that shit from Blockbuster, and it had two freaking VHS tapes. I remember that. Yeah, but fuck? like. It, 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 capping out a VHS is not as a, impressive as, as capping a DVD. A DVD. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I, nowadays, it's like, whatever, with all of our fucking 4K rendering and shit like that, but it's like, man, fuck, I love Lord of the Rings. It's such a good movie. Yeah. There's, two, there's two movies my kids are going to be forced to watch. One is the Titanic, because I had to cry through that shit when I was six. <laughs> I still enjoy that movie. <laughs> and then Lord of the Rings, I'm guessing, is the other one. Yes. The, I, the whole, yeah, I, as in all three of them, not just the yes, Fellowship. It's, it's one movie. It's no, one that movie. was freaking crazy, all right? <laughs> yes. She's like, oh, we can watch Two Towers next. I'm like, no. <laughs> No, absolutely not. She's like, but come on, into. Tyler. Tyler, she gives me the puppy dog eyes. I'm like, yo, those don't work on me. Yeah, I've had to deal with you Leslie cannot, too much. You can, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have built an immunity. Tyler, what'd you but, watch uh, instead? We watched John Wick 3, baby. Oh, yeah. And I got to, exp I got to, so it's actually funny because Val got to do her own commentary during Fellowship. And then oh, when yeah. John Wick 3 came on, I started doing my own. <laughs> uh, and I re... Uh, was it? I told the story about how you, me, and uh, Big oh, the saw this in IMAX. Honestly, oh, yeah. one of the best things. It was Dude. hilarious. Did, where, did you hear that story, Tim? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I told them uh, at the rehearsal. The rehearsal dinner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah. listeners, there's a, the the scene with Halle Berry. If you ever seen John Wick three, um, Ann and I saw it with another friend of ours, and the sound went off. So I decided to initiate making gun sound effects with with my fucking mouth, <laughs> and everybody else in the theater started doing it too. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> That's the closest I've ever gotten to a flash mob, and I'm okay with this. <laughs> it was. Hey, man, that was. That's. It, it renewed, it, it reinvigorated my desires to go to the movies. Because, like, like, you don't get shit like that, like, watching shit on Netflix. Like, no, that was yeah. a very human, societal moment <laughs> that we got to take part in. It was great. It was honestly one of the, pro it was probably one of the best movie-going experiences I've ever had. Um, that being said, John Wick 3 is not as good as as one and two i like that movie for anyone gets it twisted i like that movie a lot but but it becomes too much of a fantasy fair wander the desert and you'll find them 
Nah, he'll find you. Right, that's right. Yeah, he'll find you. <laughs> uh, the, uh, go look look for uh, this star. Wander until you can walk no more. And when you are on your last breath, he will find you. If I'm he like, what the fuck is this <laughs> and, <sighs> and then the the 100% armor. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I told Val, I was like, listen. Let me tell you something right here. As he's gearing up to go fight the 100% armor guys, I was like, let me tell you something. No one would go out, like, go out with that kind of gear. There's no fucking way. Number two, they make it sound like 125 grain and 9 millimeter serious fucking business. Let me tell you, I shoot that every time at the range. <laughs> that ain't shit. <laughs> 147 with, like, some hollow point? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Serious fucking business, but it ain't. Also, that's a race gun, Val. She's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like, let me tell you, it's just bullshit, okay? It's all, it's all a marketing scheme, okay? She's like, okay. Yeah. They did, they did, they did take it a little bit too far with uh, Juan Wick three. Take a look at this Terran Tactical Custom Sig MPX. <laughs> It could be yours for a low price of four ninety nine ninety nine, and that's four thousand nine hundred ninety nine ninety nine. <laughs> and they like the what's his face from fucking Horizon Zero Dawn, the concierge guy. He's like, may I suggest the uh, combat master, the twenty eleven combat master? I was like, he literally said the name of the fucking gun. I yep. can't believe he fucking actually said that, dude. Can't marketing, bro. Supreme marketing. I can't. Like, this is bullshit. Fuck this. <laughs> like, that actually, like, got me kind of pissed off. Because I'm just like, alright, like, we're not caring that much about... Well, they did. So, like, they added a lot more variety of, like, fights and stuff. But I'm like, yo, you're really gonna, like, just shoehorn this in, like, more than it already has to? It's like, bro, the bro, the dude who made these guns or, like, you know, has his own, like training company or whatever he already made his money off of this like why do you gotta throw his guns in here like this too yeah yo probably part of the contract yes, in the, you know what? I mean, Fuck he, him trained, he trained kiana reeves for the movie so like you know <laughs> bullshit all right we were not supposed to talk about that. yeah i know oh, shit, talk no. about it. I, I forgot I added the last two things. Oh, yeah, Shit. these last two here. These will be kind of quick, but they are relevant because um, they're new. Uh, Mulan, the long-awaited, eagerly awaited. Everyone wanted to see this movie so bad. Mulan can't. No, no one wanted to see this movie so no one, bad. No one did. Um, <laughs> I'm curious, but Mulan Who came for this? <laughs> um, through, through various means that I can't talk about because I didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> I saw this movie. My friend on the iPad showed me this movie. Somehow this movie showed up, and I don't know where it was, but someone had it, and I watched it. <laughs> um, I watched it with Val and her family. Uh, Tyler has heard me describe this this way too many times, so I'm sorry, Tyler. <clears throat> um, no, that's fine. This movie is someone read the original. St I think Mulan is supposed to be based on like a poem or something originally not like not the animated movie even i don't know or like a legend or something common someone, chinese tale yeah someone knew that legend um heard the the composer heard a couple of songs without lyrics uh from the original from the animated movie um and then they gave a shit ton of money to a kung fu movie director <laughs> and that's how they made mulan <laughs> because now there's magic and She's known Mart like she's been a badass since she was a kid. Um, I don't want to oh, use Jesus Christ. I don't want to directly use the term Mary Sue, but she Ooh, is. She has. She has. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Fits, I know. Bro, um, she, fits. Is, she is a flawless person once again. Um, not once again. Unlike the, unlike the one other than like, the beginning where oh she screws up because she's so not girly. Um, no, like this is she goes in and she doesn't she doesn't learn anything in the military. She's hide she's hiding her power level. She's oh disguised. God, that's the exact opposite of what Mulan yes. was about. I Freeman, don't worry, I agree. Um in this they literally show her as a small child training with a stick and her dad's like, Yo, your chi is too strong, but maybe it'll go away eventually. <laughs> you know, it's fine. 
just forget so about this a regular shit. Chinese military academy. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> um, no, she legitimately is like a prodigy, and she's just so used to hiding her power. Um, yeah, now there's magic. Uh, the invading guys have a witch who's like her main antagonist, and then the boss is like, it's like if literally the eagle from the animated Mulan movie turned into a witch woman who like uses magic powers, but is so whipped by this Mongol guy that she doesn't have the courage to like fight back against him. She just does whatever he wants. That's literally oh. what happens. What the fuck? She's like, I could kill you, and he's like, Yeah, but I own you, and she's like, Oh. Yeah, that's cool. oh. She's okay. like, I'm a slave again. And he's like, yep, you're a slave again. <laughs> like, that conversation basically happens. Um. Uh, so that was... Uh, but it wasn't terrible. The cinematography is very good. Like I said, it's a very expensive kung fu movie. They do flips and stuff, and the camera follows it, and it's really good. Uh, some of the CGI is a little all right. Some of, it's, uh, some of the scenes are a little too blown out. It's like, hey, you're on a green screen, I can tell. Um, and there's no side characters at all. Like, there's they've split up the romantic interest in the commander, so that's gone at least. Donnie Yen is in this movie. Thank God, that's like the greatest part in this movie is when he just... There's literally three scenes where he shows off. One is when he's fighting, and two, he's just on a stage in front of all his troops flexing. Like, literally doing, like, kicks and sweeps and punches and, at the air. And I'm like, this was the greatest part of the entire movie. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay don't spend $30 on it please for the love of god don't spend $30 on this movie if you want to watch it on Disney Plus when it comes out for free in December fine don't spend $30 on this movie just watch the animated movie and just watch this when it's free well free is in you're paying for Disney Plus but you know what I mean when you don't have to pay any extra yes do not pay extra money to a streaming service to watch this movie it's not worth it at all <laughs> Uh, that's unfortunate. Like it's they not, didn't have to do anything no. crazy. Like, they literally didn't have to do anything to make this work. Like, they Mulan was to... already a fantastic story. Yeah, but they had to make it work for China so they could sell it in China. Yeah. Pro it's the whole reason this like, is what it is. I I mean, okay, I, I'm not going to presume to understand anything about how China would perceive this movie. But, like... If it was the original. Like, did the original Mulan have a problem in China? Was that a thing? So the problem would, is, like, it's... The Mulan story we got in the original anime movie is very different from, like, the original story. That said, Disney movies almost well, always sure, take yeah. liberty with the, the fairy tale they're oh, adapting. Yeah. So not, yeah, of course. So, I don't know. As far as I know, it, generally, it wasn't originally released there because they were concerned that they wouldn't like how much the story was changed. But... I don't know how that's changed. Well, the main story beats are all here, so I don't know. Like, there's still sneak out, go to camp, do training, become the biggest badass, get save everyone, even in an avalanche. Uh, so just to just to straight up read off of Wikipedia, they fought to even get it released in China. By the time they did, it was a limited theatrical run, and whoever did saw it, they said they didn't like how Mulan looked too foreign looking, and they said the story was too different from the myths. So they. Eh. China originally didn't like the, the animated movie that we all love so much. I don't know what their problem is then, because this is literally like, unless the, the magic was in there and they're like, yo, we missed our magic shit. Even though there's no, like, there's no talking dragon. There's a phoenix that literally does nothing. That's like her ancestral guardian. It oh, literally... no, you're right. It, it ran in a folk song that later got expanded. Oh, well, in this, that's just like literally a phoenix flies around her head a couple times. And it kind of looks like shit. That's unfortunate. Like, it looked like paper mache. I was like, this does not look good. This doesn't look like a living creature at all. <laughs> we needed Mushu. For real, though, it's the only reason I'm going to watch Shrek, is I need a animal companion voiced by Eddie Murphy. <laughs> For real. Um, it was fine. I don't want to get more into it. People will watch it or they won't. Like, there is a little bit of cool stuff, but it was also <clears throat> so generic. This seems like one of those movies. It, it's I, Disney. I feel like Disney needs to stop doing this. Yeah. So I like, haven't actually watched any of the Disney so live action. I haven't make, either, but a, Val's a bunch of Val's family has, and her sisters both said that this is one of the better remakes. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, I'll probably watch it when it hits Disney Plus. For free. Yeah. Yes. I'm. Yeah. 
quote unquote free. Yeah. When once I've already actually paid for it and not paid extra for it. Yes. That and only then. Um, and then last but not least, the last thing I want to talk about, Lucifer. Me and Val have been watching this for a while, and we actually caught up except for the last episode of the current half season on Netflix during our honeymoon. Um, Lucifer is still pretty good. It's still convoluted. Uh, I don't know. We just had fun with it, but I just want to throw out there that we I am at least I ha- I do watch Lucifer. Um, it's a fun show. It's one of those like classic cop shows with like a dumb twist. In this case, obviously, he's the devil, but. I don't think any of you have watched Loose forever. I have. Really? I'm actually, yeah, I finished season three. Uh, I'm. I oh, haven't so started season behind. four yet, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so I, five well, is. I finished season three, and there was no confirmation of a season four. It gotcha. was still up in the air about like what was going on with the show, and then Netflix took over it, and then they released that oh, season. Oh, gotcha. I, I just haven't gotten around to watching it again. Yeah, we ne- we I actually liked Loose for a lot. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. I would definitely recommend keep going. Um, Maze never becomes a good character. I fucking hate her twenty four seven. She literally contributes nothing except she's like, I don't get it. She just is literally here to be like to complain and be like everyone betrays me, so I'll betray them. And then oh my god, why does everyone betray me? I can't believe this. I um, mean, she's she's a demon. She's all she. It's just how she is. It's it's whatever. <laughs> but uh, honestly, Lucifer season. Uh, what I, what we've seen so far is pretty good. They don't waste a ton of time. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much because I think Aiden might catch up. But uh, uh, I yes, I will definitely get around to it. There's there's some changes that they could do. There's some stuff they could do where they're like the end of season four, they made progress with a couple of relationships and they had a chance to just run it completely back to zero and start over. And thankfully they didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Thank fuck for that. Cause it's like, Hey, character progression is actually good sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall Lucifer's still good. Still fun. Apparently there's going to be the other half of season five coming later this year or next year. Um, all right. But yeah, does anyone have anything else to throw on this massive list? That's a no for me, dog. No, I think it was yeah. Nah. Oh, I've nah. still been playing League and I watched a bunch of the finals for the different regions, but it's still League. Some games are good, some games are bad. <laughs> yeah, I have been playing some Dragon Ball Fighters in in uh in preparation for the release of Master Roshi as a character. So That's about it though. I haven't really watched anything. Well, me and Tyler are still watching Hunter Hunter. Yeah. Nice. Uh, which is still very good. <laughs> like, that's a good show. Well, speaking of anime, in the interest of me and Aiden watching Misfit tonight, uh, now that we've done over an hour of watched and played, <laughs> as always, these days. As per usual. Um, now we have a loosely structured list. That's true. Now we're going to get off, watch some anime. But thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Theoretically, nothing should change that. But who knows? We've all been so busy, and we're trying to play Tyler's D&D game every other week. So who knows what the future holds? But until next time, either way, my name is Timpedia. I'm Friedman. Just Tyler. The AIDS. And we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for listening.